Hey, hello. This is Nicholas Santillo and Sarah Godin of Logical Outcomes, a Canadian nonprofit. And uh, today we're going to be talking about how Logical Outcomes uh, uses OneNote to manage projects. Yes. So, do you want to get started showing us uh, the, the reasons why for, where for? Sure, sure. So, why we would use it? Um, a couple mm -hmm. things I'll show you. And hello, I'm Sarah. Um, so to use OneNote, because it's a Microsoft product and it's integrated nicely with other Microsoft products, you need a Microsoft account. So it's a, it's a quick and easy thing to do. All you have to do is you can just Google, get a Microsoft account, choose an email address that you already have, and use that account to download and register OneNote. So these are the two things you need to do to get started. It's free. Yeah. Pretty easy. Um, now it's it's PC. Well, we can do and it on Mac basically friendly. Mac or PC. Is that right? Yeah, I have a yeah. Mac, and I found Nicholas the Mac version is not as handy. So something to be aware of. Okay. If you're on PC, you're going to get the full functionality, but Mac, not not so much. Okay, so it is something that it's not going to prevent someone on the team if they have a Mac, but it might not be ideal if everyone in the team is using right. Apple. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. <clears throat> and um, I'm looking just at the list there. Uh, the fact that it's integrated with uh, Office 365 mm -hmm. means that uh, we can be moving files in and out or, or pages from Outlook. For example, we can move emails directly into OneNote. Uh, we can uh, be we'll be saving the OneNote um, notebook on OneDrive for business normally is how we'll do it. Mm -hmm. And then of course we can also export uh, pages directly to um, PowerPoint is it and Microsoft Word. So yeah. we can do actually all of our development within the notebook and then for the final deliverables, just export them to uh, a PDF or a Word document or whatever we need just at mm -hmm. the end there. Mm -hmm. So we use Office 365 at Logical Outcomes, which means, as Nicholas said, our notebook stored on OneDrive for business. But if you don't want to use Office 365 and you want to keep it free, um, you'll just have to get a personal OneDrive account. And as long as the notebook lives in the OneDrive account, you can then share it with other people who have Microsoft accounts. So it's a great way to uh, do some team collaboration. As we said, you can share a notebook with any other Microsoft user. The cool thing is uh, it's live. It's hosted on a cloud. So any updates that you make are going to be instant. And so we've been mm -hmm. doing screen share meetings where we say, OK, go to this page in the notebook. And we're all looking at the same page, seeing live the notes being taken. So it's good to cut down on you know bandwidth rather than using like a Skype or a Join Me screen share. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Another awesome feature of OneNote is that it works offline. So while you're traveling and moving around, you can use either a smartphone app or your, your laptop and kind of log in and make changes. And then as soon as you get to an area with internet, uh, it'll automatically sync. So how that appears is you'll see this little sync icon that it'll appear every, every minute or so it appears. So it's mm -hmm. constantly uh, being updated. That's great. Yeah. So I'm just going to skip ahead there because it says uh, project in a box. Yeah. And I think that'll actually help explain what we mean by uh, managing workflow and what the active task tab even means. For sure. So do you want to explain before, what that is? Yeah, how about you'll lead that, but I want to do just a super quick intro for people who aren't so familiar with Microsoft products. So the mm -hmm. language that they like to use is this top piece here is called the ribbon. So you'll notice it's kind of like Word. You'll have a lot of the similar kind of features. You can do your inserting hyper links, uh, recordings, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So this is your ribbon where all your main options are. And then we've got tabs along the top. Right. Each tab has pages. And then you can also have section groups. So you'll see this little icon. Now this is another group of tabs on its own. Right. And the yeah. tabs are also known as sections. Yeah. Right. Great. Cool. Yeah, that's a great way to start. So we actually, we're all using the same terminology here. Yeah. Cool. So the project in a box, this is how, <clears throat> excuse me, I think based on um, a video uh, on YouTube called Almir's Corner, mm -hmm. who uh, he set up a, a workflow. Um, yeah, there you go. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what it is. Uh, he set up a really good workflow uh, for using... Uh, one drive, or sorry, one note, and uh, explained kind of how to do that. We've taken 
his concept and then we've added to it and kind of customized it through projects for using it in the nonprofit field and in mm -hmm. uh, how we specifically use it. So we've ended up with uh, a number of these uh, tabs or, or sections, which we uh, then can, they're, they're kind of in a general sense, uh, their default, uh, mm -hmm. we can copy them over or make make copies into a new notebook when we start a new project. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of every project, we will uh, make a little additions to the um, template uh, for any learnings that we've made. But uh, let's go through these uh, sections so we can actually see what, what we've come up with so far. Mm -hmm. We're working with now. Yeah, so the client communication section is where we want to keep any records of correspondence, and we also want to keep our contract. So we call it a, a project charter because it has a little more detail than a, a contract might. So we've got mm -hmm. the template set up, and as Nicholas said, once we start a new project, we're going to copy all this over into a new notebook, then we're going to customize it. Um, and what's neat is once this page is finished, we've got the project charter done, um, mm -hmm. we're just going to export it as it is, as a PDF. To, and then we're going to email that to our client. Mm -hmm. So once the client reviews it, they might email back with a confirmation. We're going to save that email in this tab here so that we end up having like a full collection of any correspondence, approvals, uh, any important documents or emails are going to be all in this one place. Right. And, and just a quick note of while, while we were mentioning that. In Outlook, which we're not going to show right now because, of course, everyone's Outlook is full of uh, sensitive emails, but you can either right-click on your uh, email in Outlook and then near the bottom of that drop-down menu will be a, a selection that says OneNote where you can choose to send your email directly into OneNote. Mm -hmm. uh, and another option is that you can just uh, insert files directly or drag and drop files onto a page. Yeah. Uh, that you can, um, if you don't want actually the entire email or you have uh, background documents or other things, you can just uh, add the file either as an attachment so it looks like an icon on a desktop or you can add it um, as a printout, it's called, so that it looks like uh, it, it opens the file and you can read the entire thing without having to open a new program. Mm -hmm. This is an example of a printout. So this is the file that you can, you know, save, move, attach, but it's also uh, fully visible here. Perfect. That's a great example. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So the, the next uh, section is draft deliverables. So here we're building like a final report. So we've got the structure set up and that we're going to constantly be coming back here throughout the life of the project just to make sure once we get to the end, you know, we're, we're a little more prepared in what we need to be uh, <laughs> yeah. reporting on. So um, this is the where the kind of the action happens in a notebook, the active task section. And this is where we uh, grabbed from that Almir's Corner video on how to use OneNote for task management. Um, so it's it's pretty basic, but it works quite well. I'll, I'll explain a little bit, Nicholas, then maybe you can uh, finish if there are things that I missed. Um, Definitely. So first we're going to organize sections using these little arrows. You can use, you know, dashes, whatever you like, but just to give a visual, uh, you know, so it's distinguishable. We're going to create different sections based on timelines. Um, so say your project is a year and every month maybe you have certain deliverables. You might want to create every month, you know, as a different timeline section. Mm -hmm. Each of the pages below are, are tasks. So one page is one task. Now, right now, I've only assigned one to an actual person. And how I know that is at the end, it'll say at underscore their name. So that's how you can assign a task to a person. Um, choosing this format allows the person to search their name in the search bar up here. Mm -hmm. And they can actually pin the results and see. They can go tab through tab and see which tasks are assigned to them. So we found that this is a most effective way um, for people to keep tabs on their tasks. <laughs> so uh, and then Definitely. the process, yeah. So the process is like once you're done a task, um, you it, depending on how your team's working, you might assign it to your manager to approve. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we might have a see this is for project manager approval. We might have a section there where the project manager would know that's for them. Or we might have a task where when it's done, it's done. And, and it just can be sent over to a completed task tab. 
So here's an example of how you can easily move and copy pages. There's two ways to do this. This is the uh, longer way, but we'll show you anyways. These are all my notebooks. So I can send exactly where I want that completed task to go. And I'm going to move it. Um, the other way is you can easily just grab a page and just hover it and just send it right Try to that tab. Yeah. So yeah. the task, the, the tab beside ends up being a nice collection of everything that you've done. So OneNote's really handy for archiving because along with having all the work that you've already completed, once the project is done, you can export the whole notebook and, and it can sit in wherever you're archiving files. Um, and then anytime you can go back to that notebook, you know, re-add it. Mm -hmm. So that's quite And nice. that was a great, looking at how many uh, notebooks you're working on, you can see how, how quickly things start to um, add up. Mm -hmm. And when you're searching for your, for your name, uh, you know, for when a task is assigned to you, mm -hmm. uh, you can choose, and by default, you're going to be searching through every single notebook that you're working on, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you can obviously change that to look at just one specific notebook. But so uh, even on top of that, we found that using the at underscore uh, someone's name is much better to put into the actual title of a page because it can get uh, a little bit more complicated when you're searching within the actual content. Now, that being said, if you do throw it in the content of a page, it's a, it is a good way to flag someone that you want to look at, you want them to look at a specific section mm -hmm. of, of a page. But uh, it's, it's much easier to, uh, to overlook those internally uh, tagged um, underscores than it is to, to overlook the ones in, this, in the titles. Right. So we'll just we make sure that our title is an accurate description of what the task is, and it must include the person's name. Yeah. Yeah, and a good exactly. That's a great. That's a great point. That it's a, that being an accurate uh, description, and that it can actually change. Uh, a big thing that uh, that I've found working on projects with logical outcomes uh, is that uh, you want to be moving these pages around as you were showing, going for approval, or maybe if there's blo if there's blockages, if there's a backlog, new any new page that comes into a section, no matter how you enter it, will be going in the bottom, which is why we have that inbox um, title, so that you can always uh, at a glance see what pages have been added since you last uh, organized your pages. And uh, even renaming pages uh, as a task might change throughout the the the, um, the life of a task. Uh, it's not it's the content that we're really worried about more than the actual title. So you want the title to be something that's conversational that makes sense that you can really pick up quickly, because this is a small example. But on a large project, these tasks might uh, start to become dozens and dozens. Uh, and of course, speed is of the essence. Usually, you don't want to waste your time looking for what to do. You want to be able to just do it. Are you still there, Sarah? I think I've lost you. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I just would like to show one quick thing, and then maybe we can move on. So you mm -hmm. see, underneath July Sprint, there's this nice little arrow. Any mm -hmm. task that you drag and move in becomes part of that kind of header. So mm -hmm. this is also a neat way to, you can have little uh, categories, subcategories, just to organize your work so that it doesn't look so overwhelming when you come mm -hmm. to this page, right? So you yeah. can have each month, you know, as a nice drop down. Um, or, you know, you can also, um, one section that we, we haven't touched on yet is a personal note section. So a person may, might wish to um, arrange their tasks in, in a similar way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this we've kind of customized to each of our team members' names. So you can do whatever you want here. But I sometimes have a little kind of Sarah personal task, uh, task list here, and I don't yeah. organize it just the same. But it's a section where you can... Make it custom to you know your work style. Take your meeting notes. Um, Definitely, share I them often with your team. Yeah. I often use my personal section as well to kind of write little checklists for myself to remember uh, every mm -hmm. week. Kind of as as a more informal sense of just just write a list of of things that I need to be keeping on top of because 
the if uh, if there's a lot of different tasks assigned to me, they're all different pages, and I might get overwhelmed kind of looking at all the different uh, projects that I'm working on at one time, or or even looking at all the different things that are assigned to me. So, just kind of going over those uh, getting things done method, I think that that Gillian Kerr likes to. Um, utilize in the design of this yeah. is exactly setting up a, what we're looking at right now, these kind of checklists and redoing that every day or every week to just make sure that I'm on top of um, the things that I, that I need to do at the moment. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what we should cover. Um, so again, back to our project in a box, we've mm -hmm. set up a tab that is all about uh, team roles, our estimates and a description of what the role is. So this, we might export it, email it to our contractor and say, you know, this is a confirmation of your role on the project and your rate. So we'll just keep that so that everyone can see. Mm -hmm. okay. And this is a good um, moment to talk about uh, password protection, actually, yeah, I think. Sure. Because uh, this is one of the sections that may be considered uh something that you don't want to share with everyone on the team as well as maybe personal sections uh personal notes uh mm -hmm. individual pages or sections um any of them can be password protected is that right the uh, uh these pages can't be protected but these sections can so all okay. i'm doing is i just right click and then it'll say that option will become available password protect so you can set your password once you lock it um it'll become gray. So you can't get into any gray sections. And it looks mm -hmm. the same on the smartphone app too. We've tested that a bit just to make sure that if you're using it on your phone, the, the password protection feature is very much the same and it is. So all you'll do when you come to a password protection protected section, click once, enter your password, that's it. So the, the great thing about this is Microsoft, it's encrypted from Microsoft even. They can't, um, they can't find out your password. So you just have to make sure that it's, <laughs> <laughs> we use LastPass to manage our passwords, but just make sure that yeah. you have it secure or else you're not going to be able to get back into that section. <laughs> you <Yeah. laughs> have to hire a hacker. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But that's yeah. definitely good to be able to, it means that once again, the flexibility of OneNote for a project just because you're bringing people into a project doesn't mean that they have to see everything. Exactly. So you might have one master project notebook, and then each project maybe could even be a tab, like depending on the complexity that you choose. And you might have mm -hmm. different team members accessing different tabs. Um, mm -hmm. For us, we do one project, one notebook, just because we like this this way that it's laid out. Mm -hmm. But it's completely customizable. So. Uh, a couple quick things just in the interest of time. So we have a resources tab where we keep some of our help um, information and video links. So team members, whether they're new or not, can come in and, and get access to some how-to materials. And then we've got uh, background documents for a particular project. You know, we might start it off by adding in all our backgrounders as attachments. Um, this is great because you're not attaching files anywhere on your personal computer, right? They're attached to the notebook, they live in the cloud, and you don't have to worry about people having, you know, tons of documents on their hard drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A section that we, we don't have in this template are methodologies. So say you're doing interviews, you're doing, you know, surveys, you can also have your methodologies kind of preset so members of your team can just know, okay, we're doing interviews, how do we do them, you know, and they can access that that methodologies tab there. So I think that's a pretty good overview of our, our project in a box. Um, Definitely. We're, yeah, we're totally happy to share this with you. So feel free to send us an email, uh, info at logicaloutcomes.net if you want to get a little more info about what we're doing in our project in a box and you want to get some inspiration to make your own. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. And and if you want any more videos on how we use our tools more specifically or, or more broadly, uh, please let us know in the comment section below, or you mm -hmm. can also email us at info at logicaloutcomes.net. And uh, I think that's uh, that's pretty good for now. So, so. until next time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you later.